Good morning. Uh, not particularly. I'm glad you could finally join us. That's good of you. Yes. And uh, your paperwork, your books, where might that be? It's at home. And why would that be at home? Well, I didn't think I needed it because aren't you going to show me a quicker way? That's very good. That's very good. <laughs> You're a pr plenty smart guy. I like that answer. Glenn, what do you know about cutting tools? They cut. So the scissors. Well, but I don't know if that one cuts. Yeah, no, you, and, and it's a good answer, believe me. This is one of the tools that, as you can see, we just got it from the store. This is a high speed with cobalt in it. Okay. Why cobalt, why high speed? A couple of reasons. One is that it'll last a long time when you're cutting mild steel without getting dull. Secondly, when you do grind it and you put a shape on it, it doesn't become soft or it doesn't become annealed. Okay. Because of the cobalt and the high-speed steel composition. I took this out of the machinery's handbook. Yes. What do you used to call it? The machinist's handbook. I think it makes more sense to be called the machinist's handbook. Nonetheless, yeah. look how complex that is. Look yeah. at all the formulas on your right side. Right. And, and look at the description on the left side. Do we need all that? No. For what you, we're going to be doing? No, now, you're, if you're an engineer, it. maybe, but not for what we're going to do, right? Right. Here's a blown up view. Oh, no, that's better. They should make the whole book like that. Same page, but showing the angles that are required to make a good tool bit to cut threads. Oh, I can definitely see that. You like that one? I like that a lot. <clears throat> a lot simpler and a lot easier. All we're concerned with is the relief on the right side, the left side, and we make sure that we have the angle right, correct? Correct. We don't need all these magical formulas, do we? No. What we're doing. We're going to take the tool bit that we have here, and we're going to take our gauge. We're going to put some bluing on there. We're going to scribe it, put a mark on there so we know where it is we're going to be grinding our reliefs and how we're going to grind it. Okay. So we're going to take it back there, and I'm going to show you how we actually grind this with a bench grinder and put the angle on it that we need that will fit this form. Okay, looks like an arrowhead. That's right. <laughs> the first thing we need to do is to look at the bench grinder that we have and talk about the different types of wheels that are on there. There's two grades of wheel. One is a coarse, one's a fine. We have the coarse on the right-hand side. And the way we dress it, there's a number of ways of dressing the wheel. One way is with the diamond, like so. Another way is with a piece of carborundum, like so. Another way is with the, whoops, is with the dresser that came with it, which is kind of cool. This has kind of a series of diamonds built into it, like a pave almost. And it gives you a good flat uh, surface on the wheel, but it tends to make it a bit too smooth for rough cutting. The last way, which is kind of the way that I like a lot, which is this type of a cutter, which I think is great. And it's made by Desmond. They've been around for probably 100 years or better. And these wheels that you see on here actually spin so if you hold it on an angle, you don't want to hold it straight, but you hold it on an angle and it actually dresses a wheel. And we're going to do that in a moment. But before we do, we're going to show you our tool bit that we're going to go ahead and, and uh, cut. And the first thing that we're going to have to do here is put some, whether you use bluing or a magic marker, it doesn't make any difference. You need to do put, you need to put something on there so you can see your scribe line. Now that we've got that on, it's about dry. We're going to take our scriber, and somewhere in here we have our 60 degree tool. We're going to put that up against it like so. Line it up in the back so it's even, and line it up in the front. And this isn't critical, remember, it's just you're, you're kind of eyeballing it. Remember what we're trying to do here. We're not trying to build anything that's precision. So we're going to go ahead and mark it in a couple of spots. And there you go, we've got a couple of good lines there. So from there we'll go ahead and we'll start grinding. But first, we're gonna dress it like I said. So we're gonna take our Desmond dresser, hold it on an angle. That gives it a good rough dressing, which I really like for what we're trying to do. And I like to dress the side of the wheel as well. Good thing we have safety glasses on. There's a lot of stuff flying around. Now we can start grinding. I like to use the side of the wheel too, for roughing. 
And we can turn it over and do the other side just as easily. Get a little light on it. So the challenge here is to make sure we have a compound angle put on this because it can't be straight. We've got to give it a little relief. And we're going to need a little more relief on the left side than we will on the right side. Because as we're chasing our thread, uh, the thread is going to go in that direction. So we need to relieve the left side a little bit more. So we're going to grind that a little bit more. And by the way, it gets pretty warm. So we got a little tray of water here that we dip it in. And you'll see steam after a while when this thing gets hot. And we're, you can see our line there. And this is a rest, not for the tool. I don't believe in putting the tool on there. It's, it's a rest for your hand. The other thing I recommend is that when you're holding it like this, I suggest that you don't move your fingers. In other words, don't let go of it and then come back to it. Because if you know the way you've held it the last time, it's pretty easy to go back and have the same angle. So you want to make sure that you hold it and don't let go of it. Take a look at it like that. If you don't like where it's at, you want to take a little more off, that's fine. But that's what you need to do. And even when you're dipping it, keep it in one hand. I would not let go of it. And we keep doing that. It looks like we're coming in on our line just fine. We'll do the other side. Again, compound angle on there. So you can see that we're relieving that side like we did here. That baby's getting warm now. Yep. You see the steam coming off of there. Now when it gets brown like that, you, you might think that it's going to anneal the tool bit, but it really won't because it's, it's cobalt and it's not going to temper itself or get soft on you. So you don't have to worry about that. Now in reality, a carbide bit is much better and you don't have to fool around with all this, but if you're the guy at home or the guy in the average shop that doesn't have access to a carbide bit, this is one way to do it. And that's what this idea is about, is to show you how you can do this at your, at your home shop uh, or in a small business. Well, it looks like we're getting pretty close, so I'm going to give it a check now for the compound angle. Remember, we want to have a little more relief on the left side than we do on the right side because of the direction that we're cutting the thread. So we'll take our protractor here. Give this baby a check. That shows about seven or eight degrees on that angle, which is good. And on this one, we're showing a little bit more than that, which is fine. Let me just double check that. Now we're showing about six degrees on this angle, so we're good. So now we have to, what we need to do is check it for shape. Make sure that we're close to being where we want to be, which is what this tool does. And by Gimini, I'm looking at that and seeing if it's going to rock. I'd like to turn this over a bit. And I think we're very, very close here. I'm going to put it up to the light. Just make sure. So I'm good with that all the way around. I mean, I could touch it up just a bit. I like the flat that's on the edge. We need a little bit of a flat there. So we'll just touch that a bit. I think we're almost good. A little more. There we go. I like it. I don't think I want to fool with it any more than that. We're good to go. Here is the piece you made. That's our tool bit. Yeah, that's sweet. 
that we ground. And if you look at it from this direction, yeah. you can see the angle. Yes. You can also look at it from a front view. You can see the relief on this side and the relief on that side. Yeah. And there's a little more on this side. Do you know why? No. That's good that you don't know because now you're going to know. All right. When you're chasing the thread, you'll notice that the thread runs on an angle like so. And because of that, when this is inside the thread, we have to have more relief on this side because of the angle of the thread. Oh, uh, okay. So That's why. Right. So when we cut the thread, we want to make sure that this doesn't drag on the thread itself, that this does the cutting. Only this top edge does the cutting. Okay. That makes sure, that's, that, that will provide us with a good clean thread. Yeah. I think that if we look at the gauge that we have here, by the way, we did check it. And you know, it's good all the way up from the bottom to the top. But how much of this tool bit are we really going to be using? About that much. But so our angle, well, we know we've got it within probably a quarter of a degree or 15 seconds, 15 minutes rather. From here to here, it's if you're off a half a degree, it's going to be insignificant for the kind of threads that we want to cut, right? Okay. We're only going to use this much of the bit because that's right. all the deeper the thread goes. The thread doesn't go the full depth of this bit, does it? No, it doesn't. That's it, right there. So in our next video, the plan is to take the tool bit and to take our gauge, which we're going to need. We're going to show you why we need the gauge. We need it for setup. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to go back there and we're going to chase a thread, as it's called. Not cut a thread, but we call it chasing a thread. Like a kitty cat? Say that again. Like a kitty cat? Like a kitty cat, right. <laughs> You're going to go back and kitty cat. <laughs> we're going to go back, right. So are you ready for the next one? Yes. We're going to go back there in our next video. We're going to chase a thread. So check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and we'll look forward to seeing you the next time. Mm -hmm.